his films receive a lot of criticism. But is it justified? It looks like your, uh, your distributor cap's a little loose. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 reasons Michael Bay movies are hated. For this list, we're looking at the reasons critics and audiences dislike Michael Bay films. We're focusing primarily on those movies which were directed by Bay, although we're also including films where he acted as producer. That's harsh, man. Number 10. Too Much Patriotism Everyone brave enough to accept this, step forward. Okay, we get it. Americans are proud to be American and are passionate about patriotism. The United States government just asked us to save the world. But with his over-reliance on patriotism as a theme, Michael Bay would have you think that America is the only country in the world. Patriotism is the virtue of the vicious, according to Oscar Wilde. Almost all of his films include the American military in some form or another. Listen to me, you're a soldier now. All right, I need you to take this cube, get it into military hands while we hold them off. Glamorized Bay style, of course. And he peppers American flags throughout his sets like they're going out of style. Think we're kidding? According to some sources, there are 53 flags in Transformers Age of Extinction alone. That works out to one flag appearing for every three minutes of screen time. Number 9. Terrible Comedy The boy's pheromone levels suggest he wants to mate with the female. Bay has famously declared that he makes movies for teenage boys. And with teenagers. But we can still have adult conversations. This might explain why the comedy in his films is so awful. They gotta get their hands off my butt! Even then, do teenage boys really find robots peeing on people funny? Bumblebee, stop lubricating the man. Get that thing to stop, huh? Worse still, how is watching Sam Witwicky's mom eating pot brownies even the slightest bit amusing? Hey! It's my cheat day, oh I'm gonna God, eat what I'm I want. Out. I'm gonna freak out. Please do something right now, Dad. Please do something right now. I can eat all the freaking brownies Sorry, I want. Thomas. The comedy crime film Pain and Gain had a few laughs, but that was mainly due to the presence of The Rock. That's harsh. I want to be on the team. Critics are firm in their belief that there's no creativity behind the humor in Bay's films, and that his attempts at comedy are an embarrassment. I am directly below. Enemy scrotum. Number 8. So much product placement. This is a V12 09 Caddy, 750 horsepower, $500,000 car. All of Bay's films are notorious for pushing consumer products. You were hawking your great grandfather's crap in my classroom. Oh, kids enjoy. Look, can you do me a favor? But none comes close to Transformers Age of Extinction in this regard. In total, there are reportedly 55 different brands featured in the movie, including Armani, Budweiser, and Chevrolet. What's most frustrating, however, is how obvious they all are. While some filmmakers choose to insert products carefully and artistically into scenes, Bay puts them front and center. We get it, they paid you to hawk their wares. But the only thing this achieves is making the audience not want to buy their product. Security breach. Danger security. No, no, no. Number seven. He ruined Transformers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay, I want to tell you about a dream. A boy's dream. And a man's promise to that boy. If you grew up in the 80s, odds are you liked both Transformers and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. No they would be ridiculed. Oh. Odds are Michael Bay nearly ruined both of these series for you with his terrible films. Okay, here's the dream. Your B minus, dream gone. Kaput. Bay failed to capture the heart that made both these franchises so appealing. No! Impossible! They're ruining everything! Choosing instead to focus on confusing action sequences and massive explosions.
While Bay was only the producer on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the film was panned by critics because it wasn't entertaining and lacked the fun that enlivened the earlier films. Oh no, my worst fears have been realized. Totally not bodacious, dudes. Three, four total turtles. One's fighting a robot samurai. Why not? Number six, he panders to the lowest common denominator. <laughs> yes, directors generally have a target audience in mind when they create their films. And yes, they stick to what they do well. <laughs> Martin Scorsese, for example, usually focuses on mob films because they are what he does best. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. <laughs> But is it possible for Michael Bay to do something that doesn't pander to the lowest common denominator? For once, we would love to watch a Bay film that actually makes us think or shows us something new. You ever just get tired of being where you are, Adrian? Maybe a little strong character development or plot for a change. Well, when you put it like that, it sounds ridiculous. Anything but a guy drinking a protein shake and doing curls throughout the film. I gotta say, it felt great to be doing so awesome. Number five. He objectifies female characters. On the whole, Michael Bay's male characters are pretty much one-dimensional, but his portrayal of female characters is generic and stereotypical at best, insultingly sexist at worst. I even came up with genius. Free membership for strippers. Delicious. Boosted membership 75% within two months. The women in his films are almost always objectified. Look no further than the first Transformers film, and it's practically naked Megan Fox leaning over the hood of a car to see what we mean. I'd like to go fast. One of the big moments of Armageddon involves Bruce Willis basically giving Liv Tyler over to Ben Affleck. You go take care of my little girl now. And all she does is cry and watch her men try to save the world from the comfort of her home. And everything good that I have inside of me, I have for me. And don't even get us started on Pearl Harbor. All I ever wanted was for us to have a home, grow old together. But life never asked me what I wanted. Number four, racial stereotypes. Hey, mammy. Oh, don't be like that. If I had a rock, I'd bust your head, bitch. Same as she deaf, you know? <laughs> However, Bay's portrayal of race is actually worse than his objectification of women. Not only are these characters not funny, they are downright offensive. Oh, you're not allowed to carry a gun. I got a goddamn gun. If I'd have known this was going to have another problem, my mother gun. Help! The characters of Mudflap and Skids in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen are particularly loathsome with some critics referring to them as some of the most racist caricatures ever seen in mainstream film. In my flat. What are we gonna do with this shrimp taco? You know, he just bump a cap in his ass, throw him in the truck, and then nobody gonna know nothing, not me. Yeah, not in my trunk. They responded that he was simply trying to put more personality into the film. What's cracking, little bitches? My first lieutenant. Designation Jazz. This looks like a cool place to kick it. Uh, no, Mr. Bay, you're simply showing your cultural ignorance. Why don't you get a haircut with your bitch ass? Go whine to your boyfriend. Number three, bad and cliched camera work. From a more technical standpoint, Bay's films are simply poorly shot. He's over-dependent on slow motion, which he uses almost every time there's an explosion or any loud noise, which in a Bay film is more often than not. We also see the same low angle shot of a character every time they get out of a car. Shit just got real. When you use this shot over and over, it loses any effectiveness and becomes annoying and cliched. Bay's action scenes are also incredibly confusing, making it nearly impossible for the audience to understand what is actually happening. Number two. He emphasizes action sequences over story. We've been building to this point for basically the entire list. Many people enjoy action sequences. What they don't enjoy, however, are films that contain dozens of action scenes but no story. Hey, I don't know what's going on, but we got a movie! Bay's plots often don't make any sense, and we can't help but feel that this is because he spends the entire time dreaming up over-the-top explosions and fight scenes. Charge! Action scenes are most effective when the audience cares about the characters involved. 
In Bay's films, however, we barely know anything about the characters, making these scenes hollow and ultimately boring. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Please, you've got to help him! This is fucking killing him! Now Come we're on. getting some, please. please. Who's killing who? There's some fucking guy with the shit! Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let's thank Michael Bay for joining us. Number one. His awful movies are box office successes. Something in here needs to make this family some money. At the end of the day, as much as we complain about Michael Bay, he isn't gonna stop making films because of one reason, money. How do you like your choices? I don't, that's what I thought. Believe it or not, Bay has never lost money on a film he directed. Listen, I know what the odds are, with the exception, okay? Considering that several of his films have had budgets of over $150 million, this is equally impressive and annoying. Move out of my way! Get out of the way! Look out! Just hit him! Just hit him! Both Transformers Dark of the Moon and Transformers Age of Extinction, for example, made over a billion dollars worldwide, despite being almost universally panned by critics. If I can apply that technology to my inventions, we never have to worry about money again. As long as the cash registers keep ringing, Bay has no incentive to mess with his winning formula. And I'm gonna be rich. Like, stupid rich. Do you agree with our list? Bad mojo. Bad mojo. Why do you hate Michael Bay movies? He has emotional anger issue problems. He what? goes to bed early for this shit. Just to wake up to pop one in the motherfucker. For more exciting top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.